the R-Class were a group of 62 destroyers built for the Royal Navy during the First World War. Whilst the outbreak of the conflict led to the suspension of work on new capital ships, the Royal Navy knew that it didn't have as many modern destroyers as it wanted, and also knew that these small craft would be amongst those taking the heaviest losses. And so vast new orders for this kind of ship was created. Although the over 250 ships of the Wicks Clemson class of the US Navy are relatively well known for their sheer numbers, it's often not appreciated that the Royal Navy in this conflict actually built similar numbers of new destroyers, but they were split over a series of individually large classes, but with no individual class approaching the size of the Clemson swarm. The first of these large groups had been the Admiralty M class, 85 identical ships and 18 others to variant designs that were produced at the start of the war. These ships varied from their predecessors, the L class, largely by dropping a huge increase in power and an extra drive shaft into the hull, thus increasing their speed by between 5 and 6 knots to around 34 knots, which gave the Royal Navy Light Forces a ship capable of keeping up with the latest German designs, which tended towards being slightly less well armed and lighter than their direct Royal Navy counterparts, but as a result were generally faster. However, this somewhat crude approach to speed meant that the M's were rather short-legged, even for destroyers, and so the R's aimed to improve on this, dropping the shafts back down to two and introducing geared turbines instead of direct drive turbines. This reduced cavitation, increased actual transmitted power and significantly boosted fuel efficiency, which led to an increase in range and a jump in speed up to 36 knots although, as with all destroyers and similar sized craft, this was in ideal conditions. At just under a thousand tons displacement, their 27,000 shaft horsepower was served by three funnels, the last Royal Navy destroyer class to be so equipped. Their armament consisted of three single four-inch guns, one forward, one aft on a raised platform for better field of fire and elevation above the water, and one amidships between the second and third funnels. A single 40mm anti-aircraft cannon was also carried on the aft section of the ship, along with a pair of twin torpedo tubes. The hull, like most destroyers of the period, had a raised forecastle for better sea-keeping that stepped down significantly just aft of the bridge. Although their predecessors had been the M-class, uh, these ships were the R-class and not the N-class, O, P or S-class, leaving out Q. This was because so many M-class had been built that multiple flotillas had been formed from them, and Royal Navy practice at the time gave each flotilla its own name pool, starting with their own independent letter. Likewise, the R-class would comprise batches with names beginning with R, S, T, and U. Such were their number, although the successor design would overlap with S and T names. Over the 62 ships in the class, 39 were built to the standard design pattern, 11 were built to a slightly enlarged variant of the design, with two larger funnels instead of three small ones, setting a trend for Royal Navy destroyers for the foreseeable future, and a dozen others were from the destroyer specialists Thornycroft and Yarrow, with each yard treating the Admiralty-mandated blueprints more as guidelines, making these vessels subtly different to the rest of the class. Of these, the second Thornycroft vessel, HMS Radiant, was sold to the then Kingdom of Siam, entering service with what we would now call the Royal Thai Navy in 1920, and after being renamed the Phra Ruang, surviving a triple torpedo strike from a US submarine in World War II by the grace of the Bureau of Ordnance, and after decommissioning in the later 1950s, it continued in use as a training hulk. And in this guise, it appears to still be around today. Reports are somewhat unclear, although some of them indicate she may have been removed from the water around the year 2000 and encased in concrete, much like the battleship Mikasa, at a shrine to the prince who negotiated her purchase and who is viewed as the founder of the Thai Navy. Unfortunately, there are quite a number of shrines to that particular prince in Thailand, and so I wasn't able to track down any specific photos of the shrine in question. As for the rest of the class, 
Eight of them would be lost during the First World War, with the bulk of the remaining vessels scrapped in the interwar years, as the standard displacement and armament of Royal Navy destroyers had advanced considerably in the later war and early interwar years. Apart from the X Radiant, HMS Skate would be the only other vessel of the class to survive past the 1930s, being fitted as a mine layer during this period and serving at HMS Vernon, the Royal Navy's torpedo school, before being drafted into a variety of roles including convoy escort and minesweeper during World War II, even seeing a stint at the Normandy landings. This last survivor would be sold and broken up in 1947. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.